So hello everybody, and uh, yep, here we are with episode 2 of Journey to the Stars. Now, as you saw, the Werner Space Telescope has been destroyed. This is, this is quite a bad time, because that telescope was part of our array for detecting the asteroid. So, yes, we may need to send up a replacement, or maybe we won't, because we don't want further ESPA hostility. Now, it was the ESPA who launched that rocket that destroyed our beautiful space telescope that I was very proud of. Now it's gone, so yes, if you're wondering, ESPA stands for Environmental Space Protection Agency, and they believe that our our news, our reports of a killer asteroid heading towards Kerbin, are completely baseless. Nothing is right, they believe we are completely wrong, and they, are believe, they believe we are only saying this so that we can gain control of the colonial rights to Lathe and various other planets. <coughs> so as such, they have destroyed our space telescope. Now, ESPA are quite powerful. That was only a minor ICBM. This was only it was only to warn us because we had f talks with them, failed multiple times. They won't listen to us at all, and they launched this rocket as a warning. It, was, it wasn't really more of a warning; it was more of an act of war. But um, we can't retaliate exactly because we, well, we don't want to start a war. This isn't the time for a war. This is the time for. Uh, preparation for this asteroid, so we can't spend time trying to convince them that this is the truth. So wh what I'm launching here is a, some protective measures. <laughs> some protective measures against any ESPA hostility that may threaten the fuel depot. Because, as you know, that fuel depot is very important, and if it, it, if it gets destroyed, well, that's quite a lot of money and time gone down the drain, so we can't have that happening. So yeah, oh, on another note, that, um, that gigantic bulbous thing on top of the <coughs> on top of the um, the rocket, some of you will recognize as a fairing from uh, procedural fairings. It's a mod. I know I said I wouldn't use mods, but I really wanted to use this one because it looks it just looks so nice. Look at it! Look at it! Doesn't it look amazing? Oh, I was geeking out when I saw this. Like it just is perfect. I used to use this mod a lot, but it doesn't doesn't change. It actually adds more weight to the rockets, so it doesn't really change anything. I could launch just as easily without the fairing, but it just looks so nice. So yeah. Oh, here it goes. Oh, look at that! Isn't it amazing? Oh, it doesn't look lovely. <laughs> so we're getting this thing together now. Now, as you can see, maybe if you can see it, here we are arriving at the fuel depot. These are our new fighters. These are unmanned fighters, and we'll be using these to defend against the Espa. So my plan originally was to dock this thing in the middle. You see, there's a middle docking port between those four docking ports, but it won't fit in there. Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I didn't plan for that. So I've decided to dock it on top uh, temporarily until we can dock it somewhere else. Again, this is sped up quite a lot because this was this, this part was very, very laggy. I don't have a very good computer. <laughs> so I hope you don't mind. But I'm just speeding up the footage instead of... Uh, well, I don't have any money, so I hope you don't mind me just speeding up the footage. Because it, it gets rid of the lag, I think. Mostly. Uh, it's not quite as smooth as it would be, but it, it helps. So we're docking this thing in. You can kind of see the fighter cubes. <laughs> They're kind of uh, important addition here. These are going to stop. If anything comes near this station, if any, any ESPA class fight, ESPA fighters come near this station, they will be annihilated by these cubes. Now these cubes are incredibly durable. Very, very durable. They can withstand huge, Im huge kinetic impact because of the um, their armor. Uh, however, the probe core inside is quite vulnerable. But what they can also do is they're equipped with... They don't have any engines, all they have is RTS, so you can't use them for... You can only use them more for close combat, if you get what I mean. They can't really be used for long range. Like, if I wanted to bring one to somewhere in the dual system, I couldn't, because they don't have the fuel. The, their only impulse drive is the... Their only means of transportation is the RCS. So yeah, we have this docked right here. So we're going to detach one, and see how it works. So, switch to it. We're going to destroy that fuel tank over there. So here we go, bringing it out. Er, bringing it out, excuse me. And, uh, yep, so we're bringing it out here. Now, yes, it's incredibly durable. It's it's equipped with four torpedoes. Missiles, actually, I think they're missiles. So, equipped with four missiles. And these missiles are going to destroy, the, well, hopefully destroy the tank. I have no idea what they're going to do. Well, actually, no, of course I do, because I recorded this and then put my voice over. But that doesn't matter because we're going to see what's, what, uh, what's going to happen. So this took a bit of maneuvering. I wanted to get this right, because this is quite... They're quite inaccurate, <laughs> let's say. But anyway, yeah, this guy comes equipped with a load of RCS fuel, a load of RCS thrusters, 
probe core, two docking ports, and four missiles. Now these aren't reusable, so after they're finished, the best thing you can do is either slam the cube itself into another spacecraft, or deorbit it. I ended up deorbiting this thing, as you'll see, before. Uh, but yeah, boom, boom, brilliant. It's not great. Very happy with that. But it didn't destroy it at all. <laughs> now I blame that on the KSP physics engine because a lot of the times when I try stuff like that, it doesn't barely even touches it. Um, which is a real pain. Okay, so we're going to deorbit this little cube just to show you how durable it really is. So we're going to deorbit him. MTQ, he's very cute. I do love these cubes. <laughs> Took me, uh, didn't take me that long to design. I'm quite happy with them, but you can stack them as well because they have docking ports. So, yep, stackable fighter cubes. It's the coolest name ever. But they don't work in atmosphere. Not at all. No, 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 no. Not even remotely good in atmosphere. So they're only for space combat and close range space combat at that. I strap them onto stuff so I can, you know, detach them and shoot missiles at things. So yep, yeah, here we go. Quite durable withstanding re-entry. And this is the part where you'll see how durable that, that armor really is. Watch. Boom. The only surviving piece was the armor. <laughs> so up we go with another rocket. Now, we have been instructed, this is the next phase of the station construction. We have been instructed to, I, lo I know how much you love rocket launches, so I've included quite a lot in this video. <laughs> uh, if you don't like rocket launches that much because they're quite boring, again, sorry for the lighting, but um, if you are if you don't like rockets, rocket launches as much as I do, you can feel free to skip this bit, But uh, unless you want to hear my beautiful voice talking to you in the most lovely way. So we're launching this thing, and I don't know if you can see, because I certainly can't see, why did I launch this at night? That was a terrible decision. <laughs> Why did you do that, spore guy? Why? Why did you do that? You're not very smart, are you? You're not a smart one, Mr. Spore. All right, up we go. So yeah, as you can see, or maybe you saw at the start, these are the engines. The kind of you may have gotten a glimpse of them there, uh, under the dark, under the shadow of the of the dark, the shadow of the darkness. That makes absolutely no sense. Why did I say that? No idea. But um, yep, we're going up here and uh, detach it. So these engines are um, LVN engines, they're the nuclear engines. I chose them because we need to have something really efficient. It might be slow to get to lathe, but when it gets to lathe it's still gonna have quite a bit of fuel left. Which is what we want, because it's a fuel depot. So we need to have a lot of fuel left um, in order to refuel the spacecraft that I'll be sending there. So off we go. Here we go, we're gonna come in close now quite a bit of lag there as we approach the fuel depot during the night which is convenient so what I'm going to do, I'm going to slow down and I'm going to then time accelerate into day because I'm sure you don't want to see docking at night I certainly do not want to do docking at night but uh, yeah, we'll see how this works out now so we're in the sun now these, I only recorded one of these actually docking because I, I'm sure you don't want to see all four of them docking. It was quite tedious, but um, each one is two. Each uh, each uh, module there has two LVN engines. Well, nuclear engines. I'm sure you know the best as me being a smarty pants here calling them by their actual name. But um, so what happens is we detach them uh, one by one and we dock them into place, and they will they'll hover over and just dock themselves onto the four, there was four senior docking ports on the four sides and we're going to dock them there. Again, this is quite important as, again, we really need the engines to be on this thing because we're going to have to probably get moving at some point because the jewel window isn't too far away. So we're going to, yep, there we go. There is one. And bring it over. So yep, these are very basic things. I tried to, I'm trying to keep the part count as absolutely terribly low as possible because yep it gets laggy <laughs> this was incredibly laggy um, but uh, you know I sped it up so um, you don't have to see all the lag Cause that would make for a very entertaining w w video wouldn't it a collection of pictures with a voiceover so um, oh, I wasn't taking a dig at people who do that because you know Perhaps is expensive. Well, it's not that expensive, but it's expensive if you're, if you're still in school and you don't have any money and you have to ask your parents for money everywhere. I don't know. Anyway, so up we go. Up we go. And we're going to dock in here. I'm using... Oh, I should probably address this. I'm using the docking alignment indicator. 
Now, I'm using this, <laughs> this mod, because if you don't want me to use it, just say so. Give me a shout and I'll not use it in the future. But um, I'm using this mod because it gets quite... I, I'm so sick of saying this and I'm... Well, no, I'm sorry for saying it all the time. I know you're sick of me saying it. Um, and it's just it's just excuses and everything for this. I shouldn't have an excuse really, but um, yeah, I'm using it just because it's it's easier. I I you know I don't really have to. No, it's either this or Mech Jeb, and I'm not using Mech Jeb. I can do all this burns and stuff, all these precision stuff by myself. I can do all this. I don't need a uh, an autopilot. So this thing I'm docking here is a. It's basically the the new. It's gonna. It's where I'm gonna put the fighters because they're kind of in an awkward position where they are. Because that's where I'm going to put the, the habitation. Just the crew, the three or four crew. I'm gonna stick on this thing, just to have some form of crew on it, like so where they can rest their legs and everything. So we're bringing this up. And docked. Brilliant. So yeah, time accelerating today, so we can see what in the name of God is going on. If we go, just leave those tanks and stuff floating away. Oh, isn't it majestic? Isn't it marvelous? Isn't it brilliant? So we'll undock the first fella here. And, uh, yeah, what we're basically going to do is just dock these down at the bottom so that we can... so that we have another place. So, well, we, we don't have them up there because we don't want them up there. Because they're... they're not in a good spot up there. Because I really wanted to put different things there. So, down we go. Down we go. Over we go. Over we go. I've run out of things to say. Oh dear. Right, so. Across we go. And we're going to dock this thing. These things, these little cubes, again, as you saw earlier, can survive huge, huge kinetic impacts. I don't know how fast that thing was going, but jeez, it was going fast. So, in we go, and... Come on, come on, come on. Dock it, 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 dock it. Okay. You docked. Good for you. So, yeah, we're docking the final one here. Which is, um, took me a while, <laughs> or it didn't take me that long. So, in we go. These are very vigor, like, aggressive uh, docking patterns I'm going for here. But uh, these missiles are extremely powerful, as I showed earlier, even though they did no damage. They will do damage. Uh, they probably they will do damage. But, yes, another launch! Another launch. I know how much you guys love rocket launches, and I, because I love them too. And uh, yes, isn't it beautiful? This one's faster than normal. I, I think. It doesn't seem faster. Than... Anyway, okay. Um, okay, I know it's faster than normal because I bloody well edited it. But anyway, so up we go. To the right, as usual. This is the same. If you haven't noticed, I'm using the same launch stage. I call this the Theta Four, Theta Theta Five launch stage. Because everybody names it after Delta, and I don't want to do that. I want to call it Theta, because Theta is the best Greek letter, or num letter, yeah, letter. So in we go. This is the habitation thing. <laughs> Notice I called it a thing. What ended up happening here was I made a mistake. So my plan was to dock the first couple here onto the top, so we'd have somewhere to put crew, and my next plan was to dock those other three uh, ones. Um, down on the in the middle, you know, because there was a big docking port in the middle, but they, it was too long to dock it, so I ended up eventually scrapping it. But yeah, we're gonna bring this fella into position here, and this contains the crew. The crew are very important, as I'm sure you know. Crew in cur in the Kerbal universe are important because Kerbals somehow last forever. I saw a theory going around that they uh they have chlorophyll and the chlorophyll absorbs sunlight and makes food for them. But, uh, I don't know, squad might get around at some point adding life support, but that would make our rockets much bigger and more challenging. I don't know. Tell me what you think about that. So yeah, we deorbited, we got rid of this thing <laughs> by basically just uh, getting rid of it and taking the Kerbal out of it and flying him back up again. Because we want as little things around this thing as possible to keep the hard count, to keep, you know, to keep as many vessels as little vessels as possible loaded. So, in we go, in here. Yay! So here we go, isn't it beautiful? And I think I'll see you guys. Oh, we're getting orders from Mission Control. Unpressed in Okay, accelerate the building. That's fine. New generation of fighters and spacecraft. Oh, okay. That's alright. 
that sounds good. Oh, they're mobilizing. So, okay, here's our mission objectives, apparently. So, lunar orbit. Ah, uh, damn it. That's gonna take a while. Yep, thanks for that. Number two. Min missile. Ah, uh, okay, fine. We'll put it in min missile orbit. Jesus, it'll probably be better off in min missile orbit. In fairness. <sighs> Company by offensive view. Uh, okay, I can probably do that. That wouldn't be too bad. So, yeah, I didn't either, Steve. I didn't either. I hope we can get through this. So, yeah, I'm Sporeguy64, and uh, I'll see you later.